Hello everybody, no crocheting today because I have a house guest, but I wanted to talk to you about how to read an epic poem because I saw a post recently of somebody struggling with the Iliad and wanted to just instruct you guys a little bit on how you can get the best experience with epic poetry as a non-classics major. The three epic poems you're going to hear the most about are the Iliad, which takes place 10 years into the Trojan War and takes us through Hector's death, which is kind of like when the tide really turns for the Trojans. And then we have the Odyssey, which is Odysseus, a Greek soldier's return home to Ithaca. It takes him 10 years because he got cursed by Poseidon early on. and. The third one is in Latin, it's Virgil's Aeneid, which is about a Trojan soldier going to Italy and eventually starting the lineage that founds Rome. Before I talk about the English, a few things that get lost in translation when you are moving from Greek or Latin into English are that these poems are written in meter. They are meant to be said out loud and so you'll see a lot of repeating lines because that's like when you forget and you just need something to fit the meter, those are why those exist. So um, the meter for most epics is dactylic hexameter. If you know what that means, you do. It doesn't really matter here, but what you should kind of keep in mind is that because these poems had a rhythm, people of the time could hear a poem and similar to how if we turned on a radio station at random, we could be able to tell like, oh, that's a country song or that's a pop song by the beat, the way the singer's singing, all of that, very similar. In order to translate Greek and Latin, you look at the ending of a word and that ending tells you what it does in a sentence. Because we have that ending that tells us what to do in a sentence, sentence structure isn't like it is in English where you have subject, verb, direct object, and maybe so forth in other more complicated sentences. They could move those pieces around and so you have to figure out where the word goes based off of the endings which means that there's a lot more freedom for wordplay actually when you don't have to have the words in a specific order in the sentence and also of course because it's a different language certain words will rhyme or sound alike that don't sound alike in english and are hard to fudge keeping those two things in mind the poetry aspect and the wordplay aspects what i have found is Translators are either good at doing one or the other, but not both. They're not good at making it poetry that has the correct wordplay or making the wordplay work in some sort of poetic form. And in my classics courses, at least, most of the translations that my professors like chose were Richard Lattimore or Robert Fagels. I tend to like Fagels better when it comes to the Iliad and the Odyssey. I think I also have his translation of the Aeneid, but get the translation that is easiest for you to read because honestly, they're all going to capture the essence in some way. Do not feel pressured to read an epic cover to cover because a lot of lines are throwaway of like, this person came on this ship with these troops and even in classics courses, they will let you skip around those and really just read the action parts. It's okay to skim. As somebody who's kind of able to exist in both the English and the Latin and Greek world, what I tend to do is I will go from one translation to another translation to the original language sometimes when I'm really stuck on a line or trying to figure out what exact words that they used. And that's okay. And if you ever want anybody to look at the original language for you in any epic poem, please hit me up because I am dying for more practice.